name is Steve Thompson, and I'm the superintendent at Willoughby East Lake City Schools, and I'm joined for this Facebook Live check-in with Mike Matoni, who is the CEO of Crossroads, and we are here to talk about mental health. It's a major issue impacting uh, students across the spectrum for, for really many years, Mike, but seems to be more acute a problem today than it was before and and so from your perspective what are you seeing at crossroads is that is that seem to be true or do we just think that because of all the school shootings that have happened how, how are we how is how are the professionals seeing mental health in terms of number of kids coming in and those types of things we're um, seeing in a uh, specifically in a school situation about one in five students are affected by behavioral or mental health challenges, you know, that they have. I think some of our even heroes of today, like, you know, Kevin Love, you know, have, That's true. has admitted to you know, anxiety, uh, you know, attacks and things like that. So I think it's a lot more commonplace. I think the stigma is going down uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, we have some national speaking up about it. Therefore, it allows us to be more responsive. Good, good. Well, we're just going to jump in and start with the questions, okay. Mike, and we'll just do our best to work with each other to answer these questions. But the first question that came in is, what services does Crossroad offer and what services will be offered in the schools? So why don't you talk about what is being offered, and then I'll kind of talk a little bit about what I what we, what we we're hoping to get from a, from, a, from a school perspective. So I think there's at least three uh, levels of services that are offered uh, by Crossroads in the schools. One is a consultation factor where they could be in a, in a classroom and just doing some coaching, you know, with the teachers and that. Another one might be some small group work with students in a, in a smaller group. And the other core service would be that of just a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, counseling right, right in the school. So I think those are our three core services that we're currently offering in the Willoughby East Lake schools and other school districts. Great. And uh, from a school perspective, to know that we have people who are who specialize and who are trained and who um, have had the education to meet the needs of these kids isn't something that we can always have on our, on our own staffs and so that really helps augment what we do in our schools the next question is how will you pay for the services in the schools so I think right now we have a great uh partnership between the Willoughby East Lake Schools and the Lake Adams Board uh, in, Lake, in Lake County mm -hmm. that are uh, supplementing um, the cost of such services to have trained mental health therapists or behavioral interventionists in the school. So I think it's just been a, a really nice collaboration over the years. Sure, and, and there are there's obviously some general fund dollars that are used towards this, but um, the offsets that we receive are critical in, the pro in this process working and we're grateful for those, so thank you very much. The next question that just popped up is, do we really need crossroads in our schools? All I can tell you, and, and you, you know from your own experience, Mike, but when I've gone to building to building, talking with staff, and I ask what is the number one challenge they face, and they consistently talk about students with mental health issues that aren't being addressed, um, and, and there are probably a litany of reasons why we're seeing more and more of those mental health issues. Um, but um, we know that if we get to these kids while they're young, mm -hmm. um, we can stabilize them, we either be it through the right medication or counseling or whatever it might be, um, versus waiting until they're teenagers or adults. Right. And by then, they've created a lot of um, challenges for, for themselves. Um, got a, a couple interesting, and an interesting question here, Mike. They, they said, I've heard you, I, I assume they're referencing me, I've heard you talk about safety and that you think people can be violent because of mental health issues. Can you explain this? Well, I think people can be almost anything depending on what the mental health issue is. I, I, I don't know. It just seems like um, all these school shootings that mm -hmm. have been pretty relevant since um, since Columbine mm -hmm. seem like they happen regularly. Uh, there, there's a mental health component that's gone right. un, unaddressed. So I think there's different levels of violence. 
Um, I think a lot of people re are responsive to the, uh, the shooting violence that happens in schools, but there's peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, bullying. Uh, so what I, I would, with Willoughby Eastside Schools, what we're trying to do is set up a culture of safety mm -hmm. in each and every building where students and uh, staff know that they're, they're safe, there's outlets uh, to pursue if there's any concerns. I think that's the main point. Absolutely. And it, so, it, 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 you know, they could, we can be addressing small issues all the way to the most tragic of issues, right? right? Uh, another question we have is, uh, what can you do about drugs in our young children? Do you think Crossroads will help with this problem of children taking heroin? Uh, I do. I do. I think, I, at least in my own experience um, with students over these 20 years, has been sometimes students with anxiety issues, mm -hmm. depression issues, acceptance issues, other variety of mental health issues will sometimes turn to self-medication. Right. And then that leads to the next thing and leads to the next thing. It's not always kids taking drugs because they want to party. Right. No, very often that's not even how it gets started, at least been my experience. I think a lot of uh, young people uh, you know, take uh, drugs and alcohol, specifically the rage still in adolescence is uh, marijuana, right. you know, to self-regulate their emotions or to deal with their emotions. So we want to try to provide positive outlets for that. Right. Um, how will you help students at school if they need mental health help? So how, student, one of your counselors comes across a student, has mental health issues, how are you going to help them? Well, first we're going to try to engage the, the parent or the guardian to, to make sure that they're okay to receive services from us. And then we're going to do, uh, conduct a screening or an assessment to see what level of intervention might be needed, whether it's emotional or behavioral or otherwise. So it's really a step-by-step -step process. You know, we don't have to go deer hunting with a bazooka, <laughs> you know, so to speak. You know, we just try to provide the level of support that that young person and, their, and that family really wants in their life. And, and we can deliver that in school as well, correct. right? That's right. correct. That's super. Uh, and then how does Crossroads get their money? So how are you gonna get paid? Well, we have, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a great partnership with the Lake Adams Board and they do provide prevention funding for Crossroads to be in the schools like Willby's Lake and the other nine school districts. So that's how we're partially we get our, our funding. We also build third-party insurances, you know, when we can, including med you know, Medicaid. So we try to look at all the variety of sources that will help support uh, these students uh, in the Willoughby East Lake schools. Great, thank you. I've got a longer question. It says, if it is determined a student needs are significant enough that he or she needs support outside of the school, who's responsible for paying that? So if they need help outside of school, who pays for that? the school district or private insurance, and what if the student does not have adequate health insurance? And those are some great questions. Right. So I think what uh, we uh, have always done at Crossroads is we've never turned away a student or a young person in Lake County due to their ability or inability to pay. So again, I think we have a number of funding sources which include uh, the funding from the Lake Adams Board, we also uh, do bill uh, private insurance, and we also do bill Medicaid. And we also have a, a number of indigent funds for those who are between insurances. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the, our basic mission is to try to meet the needs of that young person and family immediately. And if they have health insurance, then you'll charge their health insurance, correct? correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so if a child is identified as having an anxiety disorder or depression by a medical professional, and is on a 504 plan, can that child access these services? Well, sure they can. Sure, it sounds like yeah. it's a perfect referral yeah. uh, to be supportive of that team of educators and to support you know, personnel to, to be of assistance. Yeah, and that's exactly one of the main reasons we're trying to increase our presence with Crossroads in all of our buildings and across our buildings is for um, our crossroads professionals to have the opportunity to meet with kids who are who maybe just need somebody to check in with them right once a week or or, or at some continuum mm -hmm. or even free up some of our own guidance counselors to have the opportunity to do that that otherwise just wouldn't have the time right. because they're dealing with more difficult or substantial mental health issues and then the next question is mental health issues have been linked to almost all the school shootings 
Mental health issues being taken care of or addressed at schools will lead to safer schools. And uh, that, I'm not sure what, what if that's a comment or a question, but I certainly appreciate it very much because that's exactly what I believe, right. that if we address every, I don't believe any 16 year old just decides, well, I'm just gonna go shoot all my classmates up. Right. That's just not a, it's just not a normal reaction to whatever's happening in their and in, in their lives and so obviously they've got to have some mental health issues and so we're just trying to address those and if we can address them when they're in third grade then they never manifest themselves right. into the shooter when they're in 10th grade right and I think we already answered that one how does Crossroads get their money I mean, we covered that one right. uh, the next question is why am I hearing that more children are in need of mental health services what is the cause of this? So I think I stated at the beginning of this, I think the stigma is going down right now in our society for those people who need uh, mental health or drug and alcohol services. Mm -hmm. Again, mentioning some, some prominent uh, athletes, uh, you know, our own Kevin Love, mm -hmm. who's admitted to anx having anxiety uh, attacks and that. So I, I think it's just becoming more, more or less underneath the radar. Now it's coming on the radar. The more we give permission for young people and their families to seek help for their needs, uh, the more we're going to be able to assist. Do you think the, um, you know, Ohio at one point recently was the number one opioid um, overdose state in the country? Do you think that's contributing to any of these mental health issues oh. when we have parents that are unfortunately drug addicted and their, how this might impact their children? Sure. A, a student showing up for school that's coming from a, a drug affected family is going to show themselves in various different ways and act that out a little bit within the school setting. It's an unstable environment. They're not sure what to do within that environment, whether that's through anxiety or, or depression or just being a real shy person or even going to the other extreme, you know, extreme acting out. So I think we're really, uh, attuned to what the needs of that particular young person is and, and how they manifest that within a family context, not just them as, in, as a sole individual. Okay. Uh, will Crossroads be working with family liaisons in the schools to put together programming for prevention programs like dealing with bullying or helping with self-esteem issues? Sure, we'll work with any, uh, within every school building yeah. with all the support that we possibly can. I think just to restate, it, we're trying to develop help Will Be East Lake and assist in uh, having a culture of safety within each and every school building. Yeah, it's absolutely the school's intent that um, that with the additional Crossroads folks that they're going to have a little bit more time to do things like right. that and to have those lunch meetings and just some of those preventative. Uh, non-reactionary right. types of therapy that we know lots and lots of kids need, even if they only need it temporarily. That's right. Just to get through a difficult time. Uh, mental health is the parent's responsibility, not that of the taxpayers. What are you doing about security with the new buildings? Well, that's a great issue. And I, unfortunately, I'll have to disagree with this particular person because I don't think you can take mental health and safety in schools and separate them out as if they're not as if they're not one in the same they are one mm -hmm. in the same so we're doing a lot with security in terms of our buildings from um, bullpens and uh, the uh, 3m 3m glass coating and mm -hmm. camera systems and uh, you know a variety of uh, uh, police et cetera et cetera to to address issues in terms of straight up hardening of facilities and hardening of facilities is one component in safety but getting at the root cause of right. what is causing kids to do these things almost every shooter has been a kid mm -hmm. uh, that went to that school what is the root cause of that and I believe that it's mental health right. and so mental health alone is not enough but you combine all those things together and hopefully you make yourself as safe um, an environment as possible. Will Crossroads staff be full-time in all of the buildings? I think we're working on our plan right now yeah. to identify what is gonna be the level of effort yeah. uh, for every school building. So I think it's still premature for the next school year to say 
how much uh, will be in each building, but I, but I think we'll be in each building. Yeah, the lower our, I, I, yeah I think our, our goal right now is in combination with our family liaisons, our right. guidance counselors, and Crossroads, but we want to have that professional Crossroads presence right. in every building. The majority of them may end up with more, more full-time than others, but that depends on where our family right. liaisons line up. So um, right now we're just trying to get coverage across the right. entire district. Steve, can I go back and answer another question sure. about safety in the yeah. schools? There's been some recent studies that, that have shown that some of the uh, tragedies that schools have avoided, over 40% of them have been averted by the culture of the building or the parents or the teachers. So we're also looking at that. Mm -hmm. there, there's a real human element, mm -hmm. you know, to being aware of someone's out of sorts, someone might be doing something desperate, and, that, and so we can't forget that human part of it too. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Mike. And we need another question. Um, that one we've had before. That's okay. Okay, here we go. Why should we give services at school? Why not let parents do this at home? Well, school community collaboration is critical in providing full continuum of mental health services across the board. Um, and students spend, I mean, think about where are they the majority of their lives? Right. Mom and dad are at work, they're at school all day long, mm -hmm. and in many cases, especially with our younger students where they're not moving from teacher to teacher, those teachers are with their, these children far more than their parents are, unfortunately, but that's the case even for my own kids. Right. I'm at work a lot longer than right. I'm at home. That's correct. So, um, I think it's really important that we collaborate together and not all parents have the understanding, the financial means right. um, to be able to provide mental health services. So if we want our schools to be safe and want all of our kids to succeed, it seems like that that's something we need to work together on. And we have been. Yeah, I agree. If we add more services, to, more services uh, to our students, how will that help our students learn? Well, you it, take a crack at that I'll one first, a, Mike. I'll take a, tra a crack at this. So if we say one out of five students in a classroom are, might be dealing with emotional or behavioral challenges, that means there's four for every classroom of 20. And if they're being disruptive or distracting, that's affecting the other 15 students. So in, again, in that culture of, of caring in a community, if you're dealing overtly with those, it's gonna help the entire class sure. learn. So it is it is a really great add-on factor for all the students in that classroom. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times over my 20 years in education I've received a call from a parent who's upset because there's one or two individuals in the classroom that are preventing, d just destroying the culture of the classroom. Mm -hmm. well, that's part of it, obviously, that we can control or we can at least help mitigate some. Right. And obviously for that individual student, if they're focused on a mental health issue, they're not learning. Right. So, so it's more than just them, it's globally how they right. impact the whole class. If you add crossroads, are you getting rid of other staff members? No, we are not. Um, this is in addition to, this is to um, help offset um, the, the sense of being overwhelmed at times that right. some of our staff members find themselves in, and the lack of expertise that we have that Crossroads brings to the table. Next question is, why should we give services at school? Why, oh, we've had that one, so um, we'll skip that one. What are you doing about bullying in the schools that, l that led to push over the edge to start shooting? Okay, so I think the question is, you know, what are we doing about bullying and how are we going to keep that from becoming a shooting situation? You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, again, I, I, not knowing the specific situations about bullying, but bullying comes in many shapes and forms within, within a, a school day. And again, I think it's up to that individual building to create that culture of safety and caring where even the students take responsibility but we want to have a bully-free environment here. We don't want an intimidation environment here. So it really is, a, again, a collaboration between the students, parents, teachers, administrators, and other helping professionals to build that culture in. And that's where we've seen the best results 
in, in our bullying initiatives is then we're creating that that culture mm -hmm. and, and in our buildings we have programs called PBIS which is a programs that we have in every one of our buildings to try to deal with bullying you know I think it's a it's a reality that's been around since mm -hmm. the dawn of humanity mm -hmm. um, but it's incumbent upon us as the administration of the schools to make them as safe as we can and then to hold those accountable who choose to violate right. those uh, those norms and those cultural expectations and mental health services again plays a role mm -hmm. in um, why is this kid acting the way this student right. is acting there's probably a reason how you dig deeper in the mental health issues how do you dig deeper into mental health il issues children don't wake up mentally ill how do you look into parenting are there boundaries can we bring that pick that one back oh. yeah that one went away before i could read it getting a look we're getting our questions just a little too fast <laughs> over here from our our so um where are the boundaries and what is the school able to do without acting illegally? That's that's some really good questions about where where do where does our ability to intervene from a mental health perspective end begin and end? Well, I think uh, again it's that partnership between the school and the parents and, and other and educators and the families. Look, wanted or not, these situations, these students are showing up this way. Mm -hmm. So whether is that illegal? No, it's just the way it, it's the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. So we we be, we're better off we find accepting that, and then coming up with some plans and intervention. Um, and again, all services provided within at least the crossroads perspective are done with parental or guardian approval. Right. You know, and and the the last question had a little bit to do with, you know, parenting and. There are many things that we come across in our, in our school district as school administrators, and we constantly tell our administrators and tell our teachers, let's focus on what we can control. Mm -hmm. I, I can't control how a parent parents at home, nor do I even know right. how they, honestly, how they're parenting at home. All we know is what shows up in our classrooms and what can we as a school district do about it, right. as a society, do about it. I know you are working on programs to make sure students' basic needs are met, but are there any programs available during the summer? That's a really good question. Well, I know at Crossroads we have our uh, day treatment program that operates throughout the summertime. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, some of that is called the extended school year, for example. And so we, we do those kind of, we really think summertime is a way, and I think educators believe this too, where actually students get behind. Yeah, there's no question. They lose those good habits of, of, of discipline and routine, mm -hmm. and therefore, um, yeah, I think we, we definitely have programs at Crossroads that can help with that. Yeah, and I would say that's, pro that's a really good question as it relates to mental health. Uh, that's something we're going to have to talk more about right. you know, at our level to figure out how we are going to segue this summer mm -hmm. through, through the summers. How do children get involved with Crossroads by teacher referral or parent referral? Or does an active 504 and our IEP have to be in place? The IEPs or 504 do not have to be in place. It could be by parent referral, right. could be by teacher referral, guidance counselor, principal. Uh, they can walk themselves in. That's right. A parent could simply send a note in, and this is the kind of thing teachers would love to get. Mm -hmm. There's been some disruption at home and this has led to X, so please give my son or daughter some special attention. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of uh, involvement that we really try to encourage. Right. And, and this person asks uh, the question of, at what percent levy does this cost the taxpayers? Well, levies don't come in percents, but I think what they're trying to ask is, you know, how much of our taxpayer dollars are going to, towards this on a yearly budget? I guess that's what they mean by percent. Um, this would end, what we end up paying Crossroads ends up being far less than 1% of our total operating budget. So when you look at the, the gravity of the problem right. being addressed by less than 1% of our budget, I think that's pretty um, fiduciary use of our 
taxpayer dollars. Yeah, I agree. And there's also it's not just the uh, will the East Lake levy, but the you know the Adams Board just recently had a levy mm -hmm. that was just a renewal that passed. So some of those dollars do go, come to, to the Will of the East Lake schools too. Okay. Well, that looks like that was our last question. Um, again, Mike Matoni, the CEO from Crossroads, joined me, Steve Thompson, Superintendent of Willoughby Eastlake. We're, we're very grateful that you submitted as many questions as you did. We hope that you find uh, this short little conversation beneficial to you as, um, as you try to understand mental health and what we're doing from a mental health perspective. Clearly, we are a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, we're expanding our partnerships. Um, but we really believe the investment, as minimal as it is, is significant in terms of how it's going to impact our students. So Thanks, I appreciate Steve. it very much, Mike. Thanks, Take Steve. care, and thank you for checking this one out.